So, we're going to try to recount a couple of PLO hands from yesterday. Maybe. Firstly, uh, I just want to ask anyone I show this to in the very near future how in focus I am. Is it is it proper? Could it be better? I'm not sure. Uh, that's kind of why I wore a shirt with like letters on it to try to to try to get the focus to work. Because one of my pet peeves in videos, and maybe it's just me and no one else, is when you're on an autofocus thing, it like has that correction blur if you show something close up or if you shift to the side, I kind of assaults the eyes. So I'm trying to do a manual focus thing at this depth to avoid that. So like, for instance, actually you can, huh, you can see the camera set up. Wait, turn, turn, wait, shit. Hey, and we'll do it this way. I'd rather this be blurry here and not have the weird corrective autofocus. Changes in focus can be very artistic. But when it's unintentional, I just, I don't know, it makes me cringe a bit. The week hasn't been great as far as this vlog pursuit has been concerned. I couldn't find my memory cards. All cameras were empty of them, and I couldn't find my little packet of memory cards I have in a Game Boy box. Even before that, I had lost my camera. So, seen the crime, stupidly placed, instead of where I could see it in the window here, I placed it here. And out of sight, very much being out of mind, I, I didn't even turn it on. I just, <laughs> I just, I just closed the door, left, and then like spaced on it being there. So it flew off at some point. And uh, yeah, I'm an idiot. Upshot of the story. So that was fantastic. We had a cacophony of fails to work with, stepping into the room. Uh, yeah, a bit of a negative session afterwards, and hopefully a couple hands to go over. I'm really amazing myself with how awful I can be at this whole hand recounting thing properly. I believe it, I believe it. You're too close, man! You're too close, man! You're too close, man! I guess I had some sort of extra focus on or zoom or something and yeah, it's pretty bad. We're still gonna go over hand though. Just because I need to do the overlay, I need to figure out how to like place, you know, graphics and stuff. We're gonna do one. We're gonna do one. Ooh. I like this uh, little Brady Bunch corner I put myself in. This is, uh, this is exciting. The big blind, five-handed with the ace of diamonds and the five of hearts, as well as a queen and a deuce. Uh, I forget their suits, I know they're both black cards, I think differing suits, but it's irrelevant to the board run out. I'm in the big blind, I just check it down after everybody limps anyways. And our main villain will be the uh, under the gun player who, uh, who open limped. Flop is two, three, four with two hearts. We flop the second nuts with not much we can do to improve outside of runners for a weird boat. Check it, pretty much checking almost 100% of our hands here, whether they're nutted or bad or decent. Um, just with so many people ahead, it's just no reason to start yet. Uh, I'd rather under rep my hand than anything else. Uh, under the gun, who was the open limper, of course, uh, bets out 15, which is the pot, and everybody folds except for us, we call. Uh, not looking to raise just yet. So many dynamic turns that just shut us down and I think we announce a strong but scared hand pretty quickly with a raise. Um, I don't know if I raise anything there. Turn is the jack of spades, so it changes nothing on the current board. And here I decide to bet out uh, near pot. I believe I bet 35 into 45. Yeah, I'd definitely mix it up. I'd sometimes check twice to see if I can check raise on a not dangerous card, but I just feel like it checks through so often. I, I want to build a pot and gain value. If I check raise, they call and a heart hits. 
I'm forced to check fold pretty much, whereas if I bet he calls a heart hits, I might be able to, to check call um, with slightly wider ranges, maybe. I don't know, that might be flawed thinking, but I decided to bet out, start to build a pot, and uh, our opponent tank calls. Maybe, I don't know, 10 seconds, 10, 12 seconds uh, before he calls. And the river is also unchanging, the nine of clubs. So the doogied board, nothing improves, no counterfeits to a straight, no heart and uh, no paired board for uh, a possible full house for anybody. I do a little Hollywood tank and uh, announce pot. A nice strong guttural pot from my, from my chest. And uh, our guy goes into the tank, pot being $125 at the moment. Our guy who has, I believe, three something left at this point, tanks for a little bit and then min raises or min raises plus $2 just to get rid of all of his ones, as he says afterwards. And it puts me in a spot. It's, it's nuts or nothing. It's skewed so heavily to the nuts, uh, the nuts being five, six, that uh, it's tough. Uh, so we're gonna break down the numbers. We're gonna break down the numbers here. We're getting approximately four to one on a call, just a shade under four to one on a call means that we would have to be right 25% of the time by calling and winning the pot in order to break even. What would be your guess as to how often a minimum click it back raise on the river would be a non-nut hand? Especially with this crowd, probably 5%, 10 at absolute max. And the other thing is to take into account the opponent, of course. And because I had been mixing it up with this particular gentleman, thought maybe it skewed potentially more to a bluff. But I think it's just not the case. His looseness was always predicated on calling me down. If it smells like a duck, quacks like a duck, and does other duck-like things, fold to the duck. Ugh. Good news though, we have booked a room at Foxwoods to try to, to do this vlog thing on the go. Prepare for the Europe thing. March 6th and 7th will be the nights I'm staying. I'll try to make three vlogs for it. Two of the sessions and then one like little walk around cinematic thing. Just like a minute of walking around. We'll see how that goes. I'm excited, let's do it. To the woods. It's been a second nut day. 